RM Sotheby's is the world's largest collector car auction house by total sales. They are the preeminent market maker of high quality collector cars and collections, regardless of size or complexity. By working in partnership with the Sotheby's team and its network of 80 offices in 40 countries, RM Sotheby's has established the largest client network of any collector car auction house in the world. Join the RM Sotheby's family by connecting with one of their car specialists at rmsotheby's.com or contact me directly at gstanley at rmsotheby's.com. LLC TLC is here to save you money on all of your vehicle purchases. LLC TLC will permanently register your classic cars in Montana to avoid any annual renewal fees. As your registered agent, they will handle everything for you so you never have to step foot in Montana. And as a listener of this podcast, LLC TLC is offering 30% off your entire package. Simply go to llctlc.com forward slash classic or mention this podcast when you contact LLC TLC directly. Hey, it's Greg Stanley, and welcome to the Collect Car Podcast. For this week, I'm going to list some of the must-see cars that you need to check out when in Monterey for Monterey Car Week. Now, this is not extensive. This is just some of the information that I have found that I think, if you're headed out there, you should definitely check out. Now, I'm going to list this typically by event, so I'm going to start with RM Sotheby Sale. There's a couple things I think you should definitely check out if you do make your way there. But then uh, I will kind of hop around a little bit as needed. Now, the car to really see for the entire Monterey Car Week will be at the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. I believe RM Sotheby's, their restoration shop, is going to have the grand, the big winner of the entire Concord event. They had it last year, and I've been told that there's two cars for this year, one for next year, that are definitely going to win so it'll be interesting to see. I think I know the car. It's one that we sold at one of our auctions a couple years ago for around $9 million. And it's gone through a comp- comprehensive restoration since then back to its racing livery. So we will see. That's the one to really keep an, out, uh, an eye out for. Next, when you're in Monterey, I think you should definitely check out the big Ferraris. Now, if you've listened to this podcast, you know that I've covered quite a few of these. But there are a lot of Ferraris coming to RM Sotheby's Monterey sale. The very first short wheelbase Cali Spider. We have a Ferrari 410 Sport Spider. I mean, it's just unbelievable when you look at the estimate: 16 to 18 million dollars, in excess of 15 million dollars, nine to 11 million dollars. Just amazing, incredible cars uh, coming. Now, the other thing you should see, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, are the Vectors. Now, if you don't know about Vectors, uh, these are American-made supercars, two generations. This is the first generation I'm showing right now. Um, uh, stunning cars and these are actually prototype cars or one of one kind of examples here that I am showing and we actually have four vectors coming to uh, to Monterey which is pretty amazing because I think the first generation there were only 14 made and the second generation I think there were 17 made anyways not a lot of them the first generation is absolutely stunning beautiful incredible cars this is the WX3R prototype car um, and then for the second generation, uh, called the M12, not nearly as attractive in my mind. I would call the first generation kind of a Mako shark, sinister looking car, whereas the second generation was more of a whale shark, which is what I'm showing you now online, uh, the M12. They only made, like I said, I think 14 or so of the second generation. I actually toured the plant down in Green Cove Springs, Florida, when I grew up, back when they were building these cars, um, and they had a Diablo powertrain. So interesting cars, cool cars. Um, I love to see how they do. It's rare that you ever see one vector, but to see four in one auction is truly amazing. All right, next, there's gonna be quite a few cars I'm going to suggest you see at the Quail. If you get a chance to go to the Quail, this is where some of the big brands such as Pagani or Koenigsegg debut some of their models. Now, Koenigsegg is bringing their 2005 CCR, which is what you see here online. Now, this is from Magneto Magazine, and uh, this is on their online article. And apparently, they're also going to bring uh, their 2007 GT1 Competition Coupe that was auctioned off at Bonham's 2023 Goodwood Festival of Speed sale. Now, that's the only race car that Koenigsegg has ever built, which would be pretty cool. And the 2005 CCR is, I believe, it's the only one. It was the first Koenigsegg ever delivered to the U.S. All right, next, a car that you want to see if you're at the Quail is the 1975 Porsche Turbo. 
These are extremely rare. They only built a handful of them. The picture I'm showing you online right now is from a previous uh, Monterey 2021 sale. I don't know which one they'll have on site, but it's always cool to see the very first year of the 911 Turbo. It is a featured class at uh, the Quail, and the Quail organizers have confirmed a 1975 Porsche 911 Turbo that was among the first 30 vehicles produced will be in attendance, as well as a, another special 1975 car that was the only example not fitted with the iconic whale tail rear spoiler from the factory. Now, I want the whale tail if I'm going to have a turbo. Now, this is a car that might show up at the Quail. This Cadillac, now this is from Car Magazine, a UK website. It's called the Soleil, I believe. Uh, beautiful, huge two-door, four-seat convertible, uh, striking color, almost like a pale, light yellow. Uh, I'm curious to see if this one shows up at uh, the Quail. You just never know. That's what makes the Quail fun. All right, next, I was not familiar with this company called Eccentric, Eccentrica. Uh, this, they're basically doing what Singer, or they're trying to do what Singer did for Porsche, is they're trying to take the Diablo and resto mod it in such a way to improve its performance as well as its ergonomics and make it more enjoyable to drive. Uh, if you see the picture here online, it looks okay. I don't care for the wheels. They look kind of tacked on. That will be an interesting car to see if that shows up at the Quail with a display. And then Lamborghini, supposedly they're going to announce the Tamara Raro. Let me see. Tamara <laughs> that's a weird name, Tamara Raro. Uh, so it's kind of the uh, Lamborghini that's replacing the Huracan. And then Pagani is going to debut the Utopia Roadster, which is basically the Utopia, but with the roof taken off, which would be really incredible. And then beyond that, uh, there's rumors of uh, McLaren debuting the follow-up to this car, the P1. So the P1 came out in 2015. There's rumors that their new one is going to be debuted. Uh, what I've heard is going to be called the P18. I'm not quite sure why they would use that naming, uh, but that's interesting to see if they do have something. Now, the P1 has not kept up with the prices of its two competitors, uh, La Ferrari and the Porsche 918. Those have definitely uh, achieved a multiple of value compared to the P1. A lot of folks believe it's because the P1 was pretty iconic when it came out, but then you had the 720S McLaren come out afterwards that looked just a lot like it, and it's, it performed just as well. And then a later 720 actually outperformed the P1, whereas nothing has quite caught up to the LaFerrari or the Porsche 918. Keeps them in the exclusive territory, which is where they get that huge valuation today in today's marketplace. And then the last thing I'm interested in seeing, at least at the Quail, will be uh, whether or not Porsche debuts their new hypercar, the, the successor to the Porsche 918. Uh, that's been rumored to uh, be coming out soon, so it'll be interesting to see if that does indeed come out as well. All right, a couple cars I'm interested in seeing at some of the other auction houses. I'm really interested in a couple cars at Meekum. The first one is this uh, 1969 Ford GT40 Lightweight. Anytime you can see a real Ford and GT40 in the flesh, jump at the chance to do so to see such an iconic car. The next one I'm really, really interested in is the <laughs> crazy car, 1919 American LaFrance La Bicione Torpedo Roadster. So now the builder of this car, he is uh, a previous guest on the podcast from a while ago. Uh, estimate on this one's 225 to 275. Special built, uh, quite a character. I, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but quite a truck. It looks like a roadster, but it's actually based on a fire truck. So I'm curious to see what this thing does. It's quite a beast. And then another car that I'm very, very interested in is one that I lost to Meekum. Uh, this is a 1959 Porsche 718 RSK center seat. Uh, race car from the factory. They only made a handful of these. I believe it was six. And the reason I'm interested is this a car. This is a car that we should have had at Amelia Island a few years ago, but I lost it to Meekum, and they have yet to sell it. They've tried to sell it. I think this will be the fourth or fifth time it's shown up in auction, and it's a tough sell. 
you know, when I had the car as a potential consignment, it was the only car of the collection that we had put a reserve on. All the other cars were no reserve because it's a difficult car to sell. It's very uh, selective Porsche folks that would want this type of car. Most of the folks that would want this already have one or have had one in the past. So I'm really curious to see how this does uh, at the Mecham sale. Now moving over to Bonhams, I did find a car that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, again, really interested about this car, 1983 Mercedes-Benz 500 SL AMG. This is a pre-AMG car, estimates 120 to 180. They only made approximately, I think, six of these cars. I have one of these available for private sale, which is why uh, I'm curious to see how this one does. The one I have available for private sale is actually rarer than this one, and this one is selling without a reserve. Uh, this one, I think it has a 270 nine horsepower engine uh, the one i can uh, sell privately is the 300 i think it's 302 horsepower engine or 306 so more uh more horsepower than this one and uh, it's black whereas this one's a pretty cool color almost like a pewter all right just a few more here i wanted to put on your radar screen uh the next one is at gooding now this is the alfa romeo this is a super special car 1938 alfa romeo 8c 29b Lungo Spider, coachwork by Touring. Now this is known as one of the most stunning uh, pre-war cars in history. It was quite the performer at the time. This is one of the cars that I put up there with the Ferrari GTO and the McLaren F1 as the trinity of supercar performance or collector car performance. This would be this would be the McLaren F1 of the 1930s. So quite an incredible car. I think the estimate was somewhere, yeah, 16 to $20 million for this car. I am very curious to see how this one goes. I would love to stop by there and see it. Now, I do have a cool car I found at Broad Arrow. Again, this is another race car, very early Brass Arrow race car. Uh, this is a, uh, let's see, this is... This is a 1913 Mercer Raceabout. Now, what's cool about this car, the estimate is $2.5 to $3 million. What's cool about this car is this is basically one of the first, quote-unquote, race cars ever built. I mean, this is back in 1913. And this one has documentation from new, which is pretty cool. Ownership history from new. And I believe there was one family that owned this car for something crazy, like 91 years or something like that. So... Very, very cool to see one of these. If I can see this one in person, uh, I would love to do so. All right, so that's it for this week. Short and sweet. Uh, be sure to look me up if you're coming to Monterey. Just go to RM Sotheby's and ask for Greg. And as always, I will talk to all of you next week.